normally uh, I'll have somebody come up to me with a specific problem, problems like fire blight, uh, brown apple moths, but they'll come to me with a specific problem, mold, insect, or disease, and then I'll try to help them figure out how to, how to fix that. So we've got different pollution rates for different insects and just breaking down how it works and showing them, sometimes even going out to their farm and, and helping them directly. Since the dawn of civilization, a titanic battle has raged between farmers and Mother Nature herself. An ever-evolving struggle with the highest stakes imaginable. Putting food on the table. As a consequence of centuries of monocropping cultivation practices, the modern farmer must walk a fine line between eradicating life forms that threaten crops, whilst also protecting the delicate ecological systems that support them. And as demands grow, farmers are losing out. The endlessly escalating cost and complexity of eradication methods means farmers gamble pest mitigation strategies against yield loss every season. And with 10 billion hungry mouths expected by 2050, it's only going to get worse. It's a global problem with enormous implications, but often solutions to big problems such as these come from the most unexpectedly small places. And just north of California's San Francisco Bay Area, a tiny revolution is beginning to take hold. One that could change the entire game. At its core is a nanoscale structure called a micelle. Micelles themselves are not a big deal. They're comprised of compounds called surfactants that lower the surface tension between two liquids and are commonly found wherever oily substances need to move in an aqueous solution. Or, in other words, wherever you need oil dispersed into water. I don't even know what that is. An angry little grub. Well, when it comes to organic products that you can use on almonds, you're very limited. Uh, you've got a couple oils, uh, mineral oil, thyme oil, stuff like that. Uh, limitations on spraying uh, with those products, and we don't have any limitations. Uh, Check on him when it dries. What sort of experience do you have handling fungus gnat? Fungus gnat? Uh, quite a bit. It should be 128 for fungus nets. So we'll have to. This is a goofy product. I mean, it makes no sense at all to me. <laughs> yeah, it's. More diluted is better, but I mean, we're going with it. You know, I mean, we're going to do some sprays for two spot and 200 to one next week. Yeah, yeah. So the, um, the thing with the dilution rate is there's free energy in the hydrogen ions and water. And that's essentially what we use to power the micelle. In chemistry, water is considered to be the universal solvent. Because it occurs pretty much everywhere, and an awful lot of stuff is soluble in it. We even use this fact as a defining characteristic. Hydrophilic materials are water-friendly, whereas hydrophobic materials reject water. Surfactant compounds have both attributes, a hydrophobic tail attached to a hydrophilic head. These are the building blocks of all the cell. If suspended in water, the hydrophobic tails surround themselves with hydrophilic heads, thereby creating the micelle structure. And if any materials that the hydrophobic tails are attracted to are present, they too become part of a micelle formation. It's a simple mechanism that's common in chemistry. And if it sounds a bit like your high school science class, that's because it is just that. We've just described how soap works. Micelle are such common structures that they naturally form wherever the right mix of chemistry is present. 
The main difference here is the scale. These Numa cells are smaller. Much, much smaller. So small that they're considered to be organic nanochemistry, as they measure from 1 to 4 nanometers in size. Which, to put it in perspective, is around the width of a strand of DNA. So in a single drop of water such as this, there could be trillions of them, which is where it all starts to sound a bit science fiction. But that's okay, because weird is totally normal at the nanoscale. The most common types of micelle in nature are made from fatty acids called lipids. These new micelle form from nanoscale long-chain hydrocarbonic acids, which are so small they can penetrate the cell walls of undesirable pathogens and break them up into micelle. Or the same mechanism can disrupt the digestive enzymes of plant-feeding parasites, whilst leaving larger predatory insects completely unaffected. And the good news doesn't stop there. The same fatty acids which comprise the micelle are plant-derived, and so can be utilized by plants themselves, with their tiny size ensuring they're absorbed directly into the sap layers, where they can be utilized to boost a plant's own natural responses. So what's the downside? Well, that's just it. There isn't one, other than it took a decade to develop. It's made from 100% food grade oils and ingredients, it's approved for all organic production, and it's even exempt under FIFRA regulations. It's so safe there's no worry of drift or harming any animals or wildlife. But it's been successfully used to eradicate everything from aphids to whiteflies via botrytis on just about everything. It's called Pure Crop One, and although it is made from them, it's not in fact an oil. It's a clever rearrangement of nanoscale molecules and their electrical charges, which allows them to mix with water and to act as a surfactant. It also has ingredients with plant-boosting biostimulant properties, and it's dispensed as a foliar or ground spray at very high dilution levels, adjusted to the application at hand. In this case, a little goes a very, very long way. And as it's a water dispersed surfactant, it can even be used as a wetting agent for other applications to minimize spraying. So if you have a big problem, we've got a small solution. Pure Crop One, part biostimulant, part insecticide, part fungicide, but all organic. <laughs>